You know we're exporting this in Japan. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Minister Orobo Bani Allen and the Secretary Emmanuel Pino. Your Excellency, Speaker Joe Bomat, my counterpart, my friend, Secretary or Minister Benny Allen of Agriculture. Uh, the friends I've made in my uh, interaction with officials of uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, Minister uh, James Marape, uh, Minister Delta Wong, Governor Alan Fisher, uh, Excellencies, please allow me to uh, once again introduce the members of the Philippine delegation. We have with us the uh, Secretary of uh, Trade and Industry in the Philippines, the Honorable Ramon Lopez. Next to him is the uh, Information Secretary of the Philippines, Honorable Martin Andana. Right beside Secretary Andanar is the uh, Presidential Legal Advisor and currently Presidential Spokesman, the uh, debonair and good-looking Secretary Salvador Panelo. He is our perfect example of sartorial elegance. He always outshines everybody. Ambassador Tejano, my dear friends, I will not be as bombastic in my speech as uh, Ambassador Tejano, but I will give you a historical perspective of how all of this came about. It was in Da Nang, Vietnam, last year, same APEC, when Prime Minister Peter O'Neill asked my president, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, if we could support PNG, in its desire and its dream to produce its own rights for its own people. And the president committed right away and said, I will send my Secretary of Agriculture to you. So I came in February of this year. And after moving around, I had an audience with the Prime Minister. And I told him, Mr. Prime Minister, things are looking, looking very bright. We could do it. But I told him, I laid down my cards. I said, Mr. Prime Minister, I am not going to lie to you. We will be willing to plant rice in this country, not simply because we want to feed the people of Papua New Guinea. We also would like to feed our own people. So I said, our terms are simple. We will plant the rice that you need, take all of it, of course pay for it. And then after we have satisfied the requirements of your people, please allow us to bring back the rice, extra rice to the Philippines, because we also have to feed our own people. I will give you a little idea of why this is so. We are a country of 105 million people. We are growing at a rate of 1.7% every year. Our total area planted to rice is only 3.9 million hectares. 
And at the rate our population is growing, we will not be able to feed our population in 5, 10, 15 years, maybe 20 years from now, given the same area of land. The land area is finite. The population is growing exponentially. We are importing about 1.2, 1.5 million metric tons every year of rice from our friends from Vietnam, Thailand, Pakistan, and India. But these are countries with growing population as well. And so we are projecting, looking forward, we are projecting that in the years to come, Vietnam, Thailand, India, Pakistan may not be able to supply us the, need, the needs of rice of my people because they will also have to feed their own people. So we are looking forward. And I said, when I talked to Ambassador Tehano, I said, you know, your idea of planting rice in Papua New Guinea is great. And I would like to second the motion of the Honorable Speaker, who said that what we are doing today actually shatters the myth that Papua New Guinea could not plant rice. I sit in the board of the International Rice Research Institute. I'm one of the members of the board of directors. And in one of our conferences, we had this scientific briefing from rice breeders all over, all over the world. And in one of the briefings, I saw the, the letters PNG, and then series of numbers, X, I, R, something. So I said, that's a breeding. That's rice breeding. So I asked the presenter, what does PNG stand for? He said, Papua New Guinea. What? And I thought that they could plant rice in Papua New Guinea. No, he said, in the history of rice, Papua New Guinea is one of the two countries in the world with the most number of native rice growing in the field. <laughs> Therefore, today we will shatter the myth. And the truth is that Papua New Guinea is ideal for rice farming because rice is endemic to this country, along with Indonesia. Along with Indonesia. Now, let me just give you a little more information. I came early this morning via Philippine Airlines, and I proceeded right away after breakfast to this area. I talked to my people. By the way, the workers who came here came from my province. I selected them. They came from my province. I was former governor of uh, one of the provinces. And so this morning I came here and I talked to the guys. We went over the fields and I was impressed by the growth, the, uh, the uh, vigor of the rice that I saw in the field. And so I asked one of them, how do you compare our rice in the Philippines to the rice that you are growing here? And one of them said, sir, there's something strange here. In the Philippines, our rice would only have between 30 to 40 tillers. You know what the tillers are? These are the growth. From one seed, when it grows, it will grow tillers. And each tiller will mean one panicle. And one panicle means a number of rice grains. So the more tillers you have, the more panicles you have, the more rice you have. And so he said, sir, in the Philippines, we only have about 30 to 40 tillers. Here, we have 50 to 60 tillers. Wow. So we are projecting, I don't want to catch, I don't want to count the chicks before they hatch. But looking at where we are right now, we're expecting that even with just, oh, by the way, they only applied two bags of fertilizers. Complete, 14, 14, 14. And, you know, in the Philippines, we would apply as much as eight to 10 bags of fertilizer per acre. Here, they applied two. We are projecting that we could easily hit eight, 10 metric tons per hectare. In the Philippines, we're only producing four, six metric tons. And so if the dream of the people of Papua New Guinea is to feed your people, we only need to develop about 100,000 hectares and we will be able to feed you. We will be able to feed you. My dear friends, I asked my friend, Governor Allen, how do you do things here? Because the first issue that was raised to me when we started this was that you know, there's this issue about the Filipinos coming in, grabbing the lands of the Papua people, of the Papua New Guinea people. And I said, we're not going to do that. So I asked uh, Governor Allen, how do you do things here? He said, 
Well, here, uh, in as far as palm oil is concerned, a company comes in, plants palm oil, gives 20% share to the, to the landowner. That's fine with us. That's fine with us. We don't want to own the lands. We want to cultivate the lands for you and share your knowledge so that in the process, in the years to come, the people of Papua New Guinea themselves will plant their own rice Amen. in their lands. <laughs> what we only would like to have as an assurance is that please allow us to buy the rice. <laughs> because that's why we are here. My dear friends, let me clarify that this effort today was simply initiated by the Department of Agriculture. Right after the President directed me to support Papua New Guinea in its quest to become a rice producer, I sent our experts from the Philippine Research, Rice Research Institute, from the ERI, from the Bureau of Soils and Water Management, our irrigation experts, our water experts, our soil experts, they came over and they checked. And so everything started. But without finances, we would not have succeeded in doing that. And so I would like to acknowledge publicly the one guy who sacrificed all of his finances, uh, Mr. Jamerito Soliman. In the Philippines, back in the Philippines, he is known as the rice trader. But I told him, you know, you import rice from Vietnam. Why don't we plant our own rice in Papua New Guinea and bring it back to the Philippines? So he's here. He has already organized his own corporation in the Philippines, in, in Papua New Guinea. And they're going, they're ready to engage the local landowners in an arrangement that would be acceptable to both parties. So my dear friends, our target for Papua New Guinea is to be able to cultivate about 100,000 hectares within the next two years. That will make you rice sufficient. But we will go beyond that. Governor Allen is offering a large tract of land in East Tepic. We will explore. We will target a million hectares maybe in the next five years. Because that would mean not only greater income for the farmers of Papua and landowners of Papua New Guinea, that would also mean food security for the Philippines. Right now we are being hit with typhoons four times this last 30 days. And so we have to source our food elsewhere. And we are looking at the friendly people of Papua New Guinea to help us achieve the dream. So my dear friends, today, let me thank the people, El Senor Presidente del uh, Universidad del Pacifico Adventista. Muchas gracias. Thank you for allowing us to use this parcel plan. This will serve as the testament to the commitment of the Filipino people to work hand in hand with our uh, brothers from Papua New Guinea to ensure food security not only for the people of Papua New Guinea but for the people of the Philippines as well. And I'm encouraged by the fact that uh, this early the people of nearby island countries are already making reservations for the rice that will be produced by Papua New Guinea. That's how that's how uh, inviting this endeavor is. So uh, today, let me thank God for guiding us. Amen. And uh, allow me to thank uh, these young people who came over. As I've said, they actually came from my own hometown, my own town. I selected them. They are the experts in their field. And in fact, one of them could build a machinery, a machine. He could build the uh, thresher, the rice thresher. He could build tractors. We brought in skilled people. They could operate bulldozers, backhoes, tractors, everything. They understand rice because they were born in the rice farms. So these are the people that we have lent to you today in the hope that by doing this, they will be able to share knowledge with the locals. By the way, one inspirational event happened here. I was told that that portion of the rice farm actually was already planted by the locals. But after planting, a lot of them complained. Many back aches, eh? <laughs> it isn't fun planting rice, my friends. But if we do it the right way, we will be able to assure our people of food in the years to come. And that, my dear friends, is our obligation as leaders of this country and my country.
Our obligation as leaders is to feed our people. That is not only an official obligation, but a moral and religious obligation as well. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Do we have you?